Hello, I hope you're doing great. We're back with another video from the Pentesterland YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most important functions that exists in various applications, and which can play a significant role in bug bounty, pin tasting, and even red teaming, especially when it comes to initial access to the application. That feature is called the Upload or Uploader function and it's used in about 80 to 90 percent of applications worldwide. Why is that? Because different applications, depending on their needs, may require users to upload files, and then use those files to achieve their own objectives. For example, in applications related to cryptocurrency, they usually collect users' identification documents for verification purposes and use them, or there are other similar cases you might see. In other parts of applications, for instance in social networks, you can upload posts. That post could be a video, a photo, or any other type of data you can think of. Or, a lot of applications collect PDF files from users to get their resumes. They also accept Word files or other Office documents, which shows that the upload function is a fundamental part of the test cases attackers deal with. If we don't take this test case seriously, naturally, we can't expect good results in bug bounty programs or even in our own professional resumes. In interviews conducted around the world, this test case is also one of the common questions asked. When you encounter an uploader in an application you're testing, what actions do you perform on that upload function? The first point is that when we are working on the upload function, we need to consider which aspects are the points we should evaluate. That is, as an attacker, when I see an upload function, what tests do I perform? The first test focuses on the extension of the uploaded file and the content of that file. So, if you are dealing with a traditional application, for example, one built on PHP, ASP, JSP, or similar infrastructures, you can hope that if you upload code written in the backend language of that application, say, your application is PHP and you upload a .php file with this content, and it gets uploaded to the server as is, with the same extension and without any changes to the file content. When you want to view this file, what happens is that the file is not returned to you directly. Instead, it is first passed to the web server. The web server then hands it over to the PHP interpreter, and the interpreted output is what gets displayed to us. What does this lead to? It leads to code execution, and as a result, instead of, say, using PHP, you can use the system function and turn it into command execution, and basically gain access to the server. One of the important points to consider here is that I've seen many people, even when working on modern applications, make this mistake. For example, they try to upload a .py file. Like, for instance, when they're working with a Django application, they go and upload a .py file, which is a mistake. Because modern applications are based on routing, and those traditional tests no longer work on them. Of course, in a lab environment, you could actually make it work, but in a real-world setting, I've never seen that happen because this only occurs if the developer themselves intentionally creates a vulnerability. So keep in mind this test, where we upload the backend code with the desired extension, works on traditional applications, not on modern ones. The next point is that, when it comes to your site server, you could also try to find other technical vulnerabilities. For example, by uploading Office-related files like DOCX or various PowerPoint formats, it's possible, under certain conditions, since XML is being sent, that you might be able to exploit vulnerabilities like XXE. I might show you a sample of this in a lab environment in future videos. Of course, those of you who are in the mentoring program already know that every vulnerability we discover over time on real targets, we demo for the students. We try not to set any limitations on demoing these for the students. Another test case 
that can be checked at the body, an extension layer is to also consider client-side vulnerabilities. Look guys, when you're uploading a file, there are two scenarios. Either you can see the file afterwards. For example, you upload a file, and it tells you your file has been uploaded to a certain path. When it says it's been uploaded to a certain path, it means you can see the file. It has a path, and since it has a path, you can also send it to another user. So if you can make it so that your file runs in a frame, runs JavaScript code, HTML, CSS, or any of these, what kind of vulnerabilities have you reached? Client-side vulnerabilities. So one of the interesting things about file upload is trying to upload SVG and HTML files. This can help you reach client-side vulnerabilities. And here's a very common SVG example that I use. It's really simple. Whenever you see an uploader, just try to upload a .svg file and hope that the file gets placed directly in your application's path. Then, when you open it, the browser will execute this code. Let me mention an important point. This has happened in the applications we've tested. There was an application where, instead of uploading a test.svg file, we uploaded a test.png file. We uploaded a test.png file instead of an SVG. But in the content type of our request, the form we send, there's a content type field. In that content type, instead of, say, image slash PNG, we set the content type to something else. For example, image slash XML plus SVG. I'm just giving an example. And what happened was that based on the content type, meaning this content type became part of our image, for instance, the test file. When we opened the PNG in the browser, what happened was that the XSS code, the JavaScript code, would execute. This is one of those test cases that really surprised a lot of people. How is it that a PNG is being called, but an SEG is being executed? This is because of the content type that we're sending. Sometimes, this kind of thing can also happen. So here, besides the body and the extension, we could also take the content type into account. Content type. Another one of these. Guys, I really tried to keep it brief, but if this video gets enough support, we can turn each of these sections into several tutorial videos because they are extremely, extremely, extremely important topics. Another thing you need to pay attention to when you're uploading a file is its file name. You heard right the file name. For example, when I upload test.png, that's what I mean. Exactly that test.png is the file name that's being uploaded. Why is it important? Look, guys, we don't know where this test.png is going. Let me mention something about the body and extension discussion. Guys, PDF format is also a really interesting format for uploading. Maybe in future videos, I'll talk about how with PDFs we can reach client-side vulnerabilities and also server-side ones. Depending on the case, it can be different. Just wanted to mention that. Maybe the things I'm talking about in this video are pretty general topics. You can bring up different applications where I've found specific vulnerabilities on them. Why? Because there was a function there that maybe isn't present in most file uploads or upload functions. And that's why I'm not explaining those here. But with your support, we'll definitely cover more of them in future videos. Another thing that I've seen most attackers unfortunately miss is working with the file name. Look guys, when you're working on an uploader, your file obviously has a name. For example, resa.png. If this resa.png gets uploaded to your application exactly as is, programming best practices say that the extension should be set by the developer. The name itself should also be randomized. But imagine you're working in an application where you upload resa.png and it sets resa.png as the file name exactly as is. In a situation like this, several test cases arise here. It's interesting to know that from the broken access control test case, I earned about three $1,500 bounties last as fanned, February slash March. I mean, such a simple test case like this, 
which I'll explain to you in more detail later. Look, the first thing we can do here is, instead of Reza, we can put an XSS payload and SQL injection payload or double slashes, hoping that it will traverse through the paths. Now, this could lead to path traversal, LFI, or anything else. And basically, we can apply all the client-side test cases, sorry, all the technical test cases on this Reza. Why? Because we don't know what's happening to it in the back end. It's even possible, for example, to turn an HTTPS colon slash slash into an SSRF. We don't have any limitations, but what does broken access control say? It says, imagine you can't use colon slash slash or any code at all. No matter what you try, nothing works. So do this. Create two users, user A and user B. Upload reza.png with user A. Upload reza.png with user B as well, but use different images. If the reza.png you uploaded with user B replaces the reza.png you uploaded with user A, it means you basically deleted user A's file without having access to it. Here we have a high or medium vulnerability, and this case has happened to me more than 10 times in the past 5 or 6 months, mostly in public places. I don't know why most people forget to run this simple test case. So keep in mind that the file name is also one of the important options for your assessment, and you can also test for RCE. For example, here you can try adding an ampersand, a semicolon, a single quote with a semicolon, a double quote with a semicolon. There are really a lot of test cases like this for technical bugs, because as I said, we can pretty much put all technical bugs in this category up to this point. The next case is file upload, where I'm basically combining two concepts here. Combining upload vulnerabilities. Now, a test case for an uploader with a vulnerability like mass assignment, which is actually one of my favorite vulnerabilities. Look, when you upload a file, that file might end up somewhere in your user object. But sometimes, you might not even have the path to the file, or you might not have any variable under that name at all. For example, when you send your resume, it's totally possible that you won't have access to that path in advance, and that's exactly where you can run blind test cases, guys. That means there, you could even perform blind XSS using something like SCG. Keep in mind, if you have an uploader where you can't see the files, blind test cases can set you apart from others. I was able to find vulnerabilities in two or three of the websites that offer digital services worldwide in exactly this way. That is, I tried to test their uploaders in a blind way where all I had to do was attempt to send out a band request depending on the type of vulnerability and then check the results. The third point. So what have we reviewed so far? Focusing on content type, body, and extension. The second point is focusing on the file name. And the third point is focusing on the file itself, the path of the uploaded file. For example, when you're uploading a file in the avatar section of an application, and then you go to the slash user info path. Imagine you've uploaded an avatar and now you're going to the slash user info path. You see, it returns an object like this to you, a JSON like this, telling you, for example, your first name is this, the avatar URL is this. The first principle is that this avatar URL should not be under the user's control. Why? Because the file has been saved in the application storage section, and the idea is that whenever, for example, a user visits the slash penstarlin path, and sees my user profile, they should also be able to see my avatar. That's something pretty obvious. So what do I do now? I say, okay, when I'm updating my information. Like, for example, I set my first name to new first name and I change the avatar URL. Let me see if I can demo something like that for you here. All right. Your support motivates us to be able to make more videos together in the future. For example, I come here and type new name. Pay attention. 
I come and change this. For instance, I set it to reza.png and refresh. If, when I refresh the slash pentastarlin page, I see that the avatar URL has actually changed to reza.png for the user who views my profile, what does that mean? It means I can manually change this avatar URL. Now, let me see where else I can make changes. I check to see if I can change it here as well. Can I change this part too? Depending on which points I can modify, I might come across a specific vulnerability. Sometimes, we've even managed to change the domain and reach SSR. Sometimes, we've been able to change just this last part and get to XSS. How do I turn it into XSS? All I need to do is add a structure like this at the end of .png, for example, right here. For instance, I can put my XSS payload in the image SRC. Let's say, for example, I put my XSS payload all the way to the end. If this gets returned to the user in an unsafe and insecure way, what happens is, for example, this double quote breaks the image search that was supposed to load for the user, and it leads to, say, stored XSS. One of the $10,000 vulnerabilities I found was exactly with this trick. This has already been demoed for the mentoring students, and it shows just how interesting this combination of mass assignment with the file upload pads can be. And the last test case, the fourth test case, is one that can help us upload large files. That means, when you have an uploader, by trying to upload large files, you can cause the application to go down, and this is also one of the important test cases. For example, try uploading a large zip file, like a 1 gig or 2 gig file, for instance. And if proper validation hasn't been done, it could lead to the application going down. And there are other test cases you can add for me in the comments. Any test case I haven't mentioned here, and you'd like me to record and show in the next video about uploaders, let me know in the comments. Until the next video, take care and goodbye for now.